What's going on, everyone? Welcome into a brand new series for the channel for End Zone A World Apart. Now, this is an early access game that is out on Steam right now. It is basically, if you're familiar with Banished or Life is Feudal Forest Village, it is literally those games with a post apocalyptic skin. Plays about the same, has very similar mechanics, only a few little different things about it, uh, such as, of course, radiation. Uh, there's scrap you collect. There's some research trees, things like that. It's, but it's a fun little game. So we're gonna. I've been playing it for a little while now, just to make sure I'm good and familiar with it. So we're gonna jump in here on survival mode. I like to do a normal challenge with all of this stuff right here set to medium. Yeah, I like to keep all of these settings the same. The only things I do change is I, I do like to put consumables and equipment wear and tear down to low and slow. Uh, actually, we could put that in medium. The equipment wear and tear, I do put that to slow. The, again, this is early access. I don't feel it's balanced very well. Even on slow, your people chew through materials. It's a little ridiculous. So I do like to have that on slow right now. I'm hoping that they go through and up, uh, you know, do do some changes for that because I feel like it's a little, it's just a little much right now. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. We'll talk about the mechanics of the game as we play. It is a very beautiful game, I will say that. The graphics do look absolutely amazing. All right, and here we are in the apocalypse. Oh, we already got some nice stuff right around us. I like this start so far. So this looks like a good place to settle. You know what we learned in the end zone. Basic needs come first and foremost. You have to build up a water food supply. Let's build ourselves our new home. So uh, let's go ahead and pause and take a view of our surroundings here. We're kind of in a... Um, I'm not too much of a fan of being inside this little cliff right here, but I guess we'll make do. Um, our water source is quite a ways away. It's all the way over here. But we will need water. So you have to get your basics set up first. To get your basics set up, we need water. To collect water, we're going to place down a jetty right here so a jetty is allows a place for water to be collected from the walk from the uh, lakes and stuff and then we want a cistern cisterns are where water carriers go out to get water from and you do want them facing each other those green tiles are your roads so we're going to have them facing each other we also need to assign some people as builders so here this right here is our professions tab we're going to go into here, and I'm going to go ahead and assign four people as builders. I'm going to have two water carriers. Now, the other thing that we want to go ahead and start is housing. We want to go ahead and get people somewhere to live. People will not start having kids and start making babies until they have a spot to live in. So I want to make sure that they get up and reproducing quickly. So we're going to go ahead and stick down... Uh, yeah, six. I like to start with six. So that'll be all of that started. So let's go ahead and get this up and running real quick. So around us here, we've got a house ruin. That's actually pretty nice. Lots of scrap in the area. Lots of good scrap in this area. I like this. This is going to give us a lot of mater building material. Yeah, I love the look of the game right here. It definitely captures that post-apocalyptic scra uh, scraping things together to build kind of feel to it. So up here we've got our jetty coming along. Our cistern needs some wood and some scrap. You can see up here these are our resources. We have water, food, wood, scrap, tools, radiation protection, because there is radiation in the game and your people do need to be protected. We have 15 masks at the moment. And over here we have medication, cloth, metal, plastic, electronics, and coal. This right here is the average health of all of our settlers, and this is the average radiation. This is our happiness meter. Right now, everyone's pretty average. We have five children, ten adults, and we have one type of food. Now down here across the bottom, we have we can see terrestrial radiation. This shows radiation on the ground. So the green is where all the radiation is at on the ground. Moisture. Right now, everything is fairly dry. It's not exactly uh, moist. We haven't had any rain. Attractiveness is something I've not really seen a point in dealing with, honestly. Uh, 
your houses want to be in an attractive area, but I've not seen any difference. And then we have electricity, which we don't have. This is our weather. Right now it's nighttime, but we have weekly contaminated rain, and we're in season two. Let's crank things on up. I need to get that cistern. There, the cistern is up and running. So the water carriers go back and forth between the end of the jetty, they collect water, and they put it in the cistern to start gathering water for us. So the next things we're going to go want to go ahead and get is a Forester's Lodge. Um, I'm going to get him put right about here, I think. Then we also want a Scrapyard. I'll put you right there to speed things up so they'll go ahead and get that built for us. Now some of our adults are living in these houses now and they're going to start having children so we can start increasing our population. So sign one each there. I'm going to crank that down to two builders now. Now here's a really cool thing about this game is you can change the field of work so we don't have to move all of these buildings around as they use this stuff up. So we're going to change his work area to right in this. So there's 605 scrap right there. That's good. And we're going to change his field of work. We're going to set him to just cut down. And we're going to tell him to cut down all of these trees right here. So he's not going to reforest anything. He's just going to cut these down because they're going to be in my way anyways. Might as well get rid of them. Should also move this up here, actually, so I can get rid of some of that. All right, and we are going to need some food. We have a fishing hut is the first thing I like to get started on when it comes to the food. Let's see if we can find a... Oh, that scrap is in the way right there. Shoot. Okay, fishing hut's going to go right there then. I'm going to get two people assigned to food. Yeah, our food reserves are low, but that won't be for long. As soon as we get these guys up here, get this built. There it goes. And we cannot change his field of work, but he's got enough space right here to get us some goods from. And the other thing I like to go ahead and get started early on is we can either do a I'm probably going to do a field uh, farms early on are really, really good. So we might as well go ahead and get a field started. And I think I'm going to put that field. See, I think I'm going to put it right over here for right now. I like to start with a 10 by 10. That's enough for one worker. And we're going to do potatoes. Get us a farmer on that and start farming those goods up for us. Ah, we've already had our first child. And the green and stuff, so you can see right here, uh, Julia Day, or Julia D, I don't know how to say that. GD over there uh, is almost full on the bar. That means he's almost grown up. So we're going to have another adult here pretty soon. Got three adults that we could use for something. I'm thinking that the first thing I want to go ahead and get started up, we are going to need more um, radiation protection. So getting an early recycler is not a bad idea. I'm going to put him up here. Should I take that back? We're not going to put him right there. We're going to put the recycler right here. Yeah. I'm also going to go ahead and set up. Well, now we can't do a tailor shop. Well, we could. We could place the tailor shop. Yeah, we'll place the tailor shop right there next to it. All right. Let's speed things up for a few. I am going to set set some tasks just to gather plants for right now. Let's tell them to gather all of the plants right here. It's going to give us a bunch of food and a bunch of herbals. Um, herbals, a bunch of herbs early on. Okay, so one refiner and one tailor is going to be what we want. We are running a little low on the scrap at the moment. Might want to go ahead and assign one more uh, scrap gatherer. Okay, so we have a recycler. Recyclers turn scrap into useful materials such as cloth, metal, or plastics. We're going to start with cloth because the tailor shop does need 12 cloth. The tailor shop will then take cloth 
and turn it into different types of radiation protection. But we're just going to have to wait until we get enough cloth going. Something else I like to do early on is set our build, our production limits. I like to set the food up to 10,000 to start. Wood and scrap to 1,000. Not 10,000, 1,000. I leave everything else at 100. These are all fine. This stuff right here, though, I like to set down to about 50 starting out. And then tools and scrap tools are fine, and then everything else. Actually, I'm going to set that down to, we'll say, 100 to start on these. These right here we'll set to 50. All right, that'll get us started on that. So our people are living on the streets. We shouldn't let anyone sleep under these conditions. So let's do it. We need to provide house for two people. That is easy to do early on. One more house might get us. We'll get 80 scrap and 80 lumber from that. Cloth is slowly coming in. And we still have three unassigned workers. And they are all up there gathering those plants. So that's going to help us on the food front for a while. There we go. People are pretty happy with their new homes. They'll move in and look towards a brighter future. Maybe our population will even grow. And there's still some material left over, so we got some scrap and some timber from that. Two more cloth is all we need. I'm going to switch this over to metal now. We need metal so we can get a uh, tool maker going. So the tool maker right here from the workshop is another very, very necessary item. And I think we're going to put you right there. Now, some other things that are really important early on is a school. Schools are super important early on. Schools let you uh, send the kids to the school and then they will use tools and radiation protection stuff far more efficiently and they won't use it up as quickly. So definitely a good idea to get that school up and running pretty quickly. We'll assign a teacher, one technician. How's he doing on the gather plants right here? He's almost out of plants right there. So let's change his field of work to maybe right up in this area. Now you don't have to house everybody constantly. Um, as a little change from games like Banish where you had to have people in their homes all the time, you don't have to get people in the houses instantly. And people who are not working will go and do things like these tasks up here. We lack, we'd still like six more metal, so that's fine. I do probably need to get a storehouse going uh, up here. Just so the fisherman doesn't have to go all the way down here to our bus wreck. So there's our school. We're going to start training the children now and making sure they utilize their... Uh, as they grow up, they'll use their radiation protection and their tools more effectively. Four more metal... For the workshop and the workshop is going to start with scrap tools now i'm not going to do metal tools we're going to start with scrap tools me free we only have two free settlers i don't want to put anybody else out just yet all right i think we have our two tools coming or our two metal coming now Come on. There it is. Yep. So we're going to switch you back to cloth now so we can start making... We're going to start making neck scarves. And he is going to make scrap tools for us. Now, just to give the workers something to do, we are going to start placing down some roads. Now, again, the green sections are where roads have to go or 
rather where you can only place a road. Looks like I actually built a house right on top of that, so that's okay. Roads do help uh, goods ferry around a little bit faster, so it's a good idea to go ahead and have a few of those in. Okay, so there's some roads connected around for all of our people. This road right here... Okay, so they'll go and build those roads as they're able to. So we've got four extra people now. We have our storeroom up there, so that's good. Uh, we definitely want to get a cemetery going early on. People will start dying in this game pretty quickly. So you do want to make sure you take care of the fact that they are going to need somewhere to put the bodies. I think I'm just going to stick it off over this side right here. Sign a mortician. Let's see. What's the last thing that I need to worry about getting right now? Charcoal kiln would be good. Um, probably want to get some more food coming in. So let's do a hunting lodge. Let's see, it looks like most of the animals are over in that direction. So we'll set up a hunting lodge right there. One hunter for now will be enough. Potatoes, that's making me 600 food per season, so that's pretty nice right there. We are in a drought right now. So a drought, the lake dries up, we get no water. We have to survive on the water that is in the cistern. We're actually low on water. Now what we can also do is build a well somewhere. Wells do not require any water from the uh, from the lake. They just they get water automatically. So actually I would like to go ahead and get a well put in. We'll put him in right here. And the houses like to get water from a well also. So that will help. All right, drought season is over. We're getting water again. Our hunting lodge is done. And we're going to change his field of work to be a little more out in this area. And let's get a well keeper. And he will start filling up water a little at a time. The people will go and get water from that for their homes. Can change his field of work, so now he'll go to the jetty and the well and keep that cistern filled up for us. That's going to help out a lot, too. They're still going around collecting goods. That's all good and fine slow things down again and we need to get some more housing going fortunately I have kind of no. all right we'll have to do it this way well I right, will move that road remove that road give me a cabin right there then yeah, I'll have you build a road right there yeah unfortunately I, I I may end up moving that workshop over by one tile later on once I have more uh, steel to play uh, more metal to play with so we have a thirsty settler it's not going to get any water We'll assign some more water carriers to go get more water. Alright, slow things down for a moment. 
How's our scrapyard doing? Still have plenty of scrap to get a hold of. You are good on the plants. Let's come over to this side. So basically we're doing quite well. We have everything we need for our survival, but some of us think there could be a bit more. That group wants to stay on the safe side, so we have supplies when bad times come. Okay, so let's see what they want us to do. They want us to store some more food, have some more scrap tools, store more water, and have two activated carbon masks. Okay, that is doable. We do need a charcoal kiln. Charcoal kiln, obviously, as the name implies, makes charcoal. And that charcoal is used at the tailor, along with some cloth, to make activated carbon masks, which is really what I do want to get up to making. So we'll get that going. We'll get a charcoal burner started. Let me go ahead and assign... Uh, not that. Probably get two charcoal... Uh, burners going. Alright, and we're going to switch this over to the activated carbon masks. Now all we need is more water, which we're still a little low on. I usually don't have much trouble with water, but we're having a bit of trouble with water this time. It's likely just because of the distance between everything. They do have to go quite a ways for it all. Let's see. Alright, saw a weird little cut right there. I had to pause the recording for just a moment. But we are back. Everything. So yeah, we're just waiting on the water and the activated charcoal masks or the activated carbon mass. So while we're waiting on all of that, we can just do a little more building. Get a couple more houses going, get some more people to put in there. There we go. So we got 100% of our settlers of age child to very old received a boost to their confidence. Alright, they are just about out of plants again in that area. have some medications don't have much but we have a little bit all right let's give the people a campfire that will help their confidence we're also going to upgrade this building right here we're going to upgrade the bus wreck to a mounted bus wreck that will also increase their confidence we have in terms of adults. We, we do have quite a few adults now, so I could assign a few more people. Go ahead and get one more water carrier. Yeah, now, now their confidence has gone up a little bit more in these homes right here. I mean, this is the apocalypse. It can't be, it can't be perfectly pretty, you know? It's just not going to be. We have a drought coming up, it looks like, soon. What else do we need over here? Uh, he's doing okay on that, so I'm fine with this. Logistics, decorations, there's something else I was thinking about getting soon. I don't really like the rain collectors. Um, just never been a huge fan of them. I, I've played around with them some. I'm just not convinced on them. Okay, so we're doing damn well, Chief. Despite all the stones that life has laid along the face of our path, we're looking very confidently towards the future. I think the time has come to create our own land of milk and honey. Would a sumptuous meal be too much to ask? They want food from 
10 different sources. I don't think that's going to be possible. I mean, I could I could get them from gatherers. But... Okay, we'll see if I can't do this. I don't I don't know that I can. Give it a try though. Gatherers hut. We have a hunting lodge. Yes, I know. Water reserves are low. Okay. Change the field of work to out here. Demolish that. Still need them getting more water. Still not doing very good on the waterfront. It, it is a long way for them to get up there. Maybe we can build some housing a little bit closer. That might help if they didn't have to go so far. I think it's also time to get a shelter in. Shelters are nice, large... Cancel. Shelters are nice, big centers for uh, population to live in. As you can see, it is quite large. Oh, that's going to be really annoying if it keeps doing that. <laughs> trying to think of a, where I want this guy to go. Guess right there. He'll house most of our other people and everything. That drought is one season away and we are... Nowhere near ready to deal with it. Let's see. I'm going to get one more of those. Okay, a scrapyard has gathered, gathered all the scrap in this area. So it's time to change. We're going to move him right back here. Start gathering scrap from that side. We're going to have you come right here and just chop down all of that. And now all of our people are housed. Good. Yeah, we're not going to get that one right there because it needs 10. And there's no way to do that. I just, uh, that's just not going to happen. Sorry. We're going to fail that one, so our confidence is going to go down a little bit, which is unfortunate. But we're just going to have to deal with that. Alright. Well, it is time for more recyclers then. As well as continuing to keep up with the roads keeping up with roads is really important you don't ever want to get into a situation where you have uh, like blocked yourself off or something I don't have anybody in the uh, cemetery just yet it looks like we do have 14 available people so we can get quite a few things going I want that recycler where was that thing right there? right there it is I want another recycler there and I want a recycler there now these recyclers are somewhat temporary actually because um, later on we will get access to the refinery which produces metal cloth plastics and electronics all at the same time so I like to have two set to cloth but it's not going to be him i'm going to have this one and this one set to cloth because they're the closest to my tailor shop i'm going to go ahead and give my tailor shop a second 
person as well. Okay, you're going to be metal, and you're going to be plastic. Yeah, that will be good right there. All right, we are in the drought season, so there is no more food there, and we are going to run out of water. That's just really crappy. Yeah, we're going to have to build another well. Actually, never had this much trouble with water before, but... You know, I am all for extra challenges, so let's build another well. Let's sign another well keeper. Try to keep up on that water supply until we get through the drought season here. This, as long as we make it through the drought season. That's all I care about. So here comes the water again. Good. We'll fill that up. And we will have enough plastic here shortly to upgrade this to a water tower, which allows us to have even more people working at it. Which hopefully will solve our water situation. Yeah, this right here is going to fail, so that's that's really unfortunate. I'd read a, I'd read up there was a, some sort of weird bug with that, where it wasn't working. So that maybe that's what it is. There's a bug with that one. Again, early access stuff, so things are to be expected that may not be perfect. Let's assign someone else to food. Maybe assign one more fisher, one more gatherer. Yeah, the gatherer now has enough food to go and get. And I would like, yeah, sorry, I know, it's it's unfortunate, it happens. Go ahead and build us another farm. And you're going to get pumpkins, or squash rather, give you somebody as well. So 600, that's only 500, but it is another type of food. Okay, so, so far everything is okay. We, we've got some uh, masks coming in. We've got scrap tools being used. Uh, food and water is still a little scary. Uh, we do have some extra people that we can assign. Let's go up to eight. And we are also going to start purifying the water with charcoal. So this right here will help take out any uh, contamination. So with eight water carriers now getting water from two wells and that, we should start filling up our water hopefully very soon. I have to just kind of keep an eye on it. Again, I've actually never had trouble fulfilling water. Water is usually like the first thing I fill up real quick. But not this time. Oh, I do have medium consumption on. That's why. I was like, why am I running out of water? And then I remembered. I've been playing with low consumption. Now I'm playing with medium consumption, and yeah, things are a little different. We have 14 children. Now here is something I do like to do on occasion. We can go to the uh, here, and we can tell this to do a birth control. For three seasons... No, for several seasons, or yeah, three or four seasons, whatever, no one can have any kids. We've got 14 children. Uh, I don't want to overextend my food and water right now. So I want to tell people, no babies. No babies. I'm sorry. No kids right now. Settlers came up with an idea. He wants to use the filter system in our water tower for a few experiments to learn about the correlation between radiation and our water supplies. We have to shut down the filter system to enable the experiments. Well, let's do it. We have to shut down the filtration. We will get a reward of one knowledge point, which is nice. It will cost us 420 water and eight coal, though. The rest of this right here we can easily uh, eat. All right, it looks like we have run out of that. So we're going to cut down and reforest. Um, let's see, we'll, we'll tell it to cut down and reforest right there. Scrapyard needs to be moved again. 
we can move it to move it to this general area right here as long as there's no, you have to look and be sure you don't see anything that has a question mark on it because those are unique uh unique items and actually do i want to gather from there now let's gather from here it's a little bit closer get those roads set up to try to help with that Pretty sure we'll be able to meet this. It's just going to be a little tight. Go ahead and tell it to have 10 water carriers. Just so I can start getting more water into the mix here. Well, so we're waiting on a little bit more water. We're waiting on a little more charcoal, which will come. Uh, we've got our scrap gatherers going up to this area right here. Our food is doing okay. It could be a little bit better, but we're getting it. Um, I'm probably going to put down an orchard here soon because orchards do also supply a lot of food. Our wells are doing great. Our people have food and they have water. They have some activated carbon masks. They have some scrap tools to use. Goods are piling up. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this first episode. This is End Zone A World Apart. Again, it is a survival city builder game. Uh, one of my favorite genres. I love games like this. They're a lot of fun. This one is absolutely gorgeous. I love the graphics in it. And I've been I've probably got about 10, 12 hours already in this game playing it over the last couple of days, just figuring a few things out before I started this series. And I'm super excited to show more of it to you. If you enjoyed this new series and you're looking forward to some more end zone, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Subscribe for more content from me if you have not already. Big shout out and thank you to my channel members. You guys support me every month with your generous donations to the channel. If you are interested in supporting me in that way, be sure to check out the link in the description. And with that, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.